Hello everyone, today I want to talk about ControlNet for Stable Diffusion Excel. Finally, the ControlNet models are slowly coming out on Hugging Face. Today we are going to have a look at Kenny, which is the first one that came out. And we are going to have a look at how to build it on your Collab Notebook if you like to, you know, to code a little bit. And then we're going to have a look on how to use it on ConfUI as well. I'm not sure if Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 supports the ControlNet models for Stable Diffusion Excel. Anyway, I'm sure that it will support them pretty soon. Let's now create together the Collab Notebook for Kenny. If you don't have Collab Pro, I wouldn't recommend to use it because you need to have a GPU for running this because it's quite heavy. And if you have Visual Studio, you can follow the same steps on Visual Studio on your computer. But again, if you don't have a strong, a powerful computer, I wouldn't recommend it to, to, to do it. I would recommend you to use ConfUI instead. So first of all, I'm going to create a new Collab Notebook. I just went into File and then I clicked on New Notebook. Super easy. Then I want to make sure that I'm running on GPU, so I'll go on to runtime, change runtime type, and then I'm going to use GPU and save. After that, we can connect to a new runtime. So just press this button here and let's wait for it to be connected. In the meantime, let's go into the diffusers page in Hugging Face. You scroll down and you click onto this. Here in the model card, you will have some information about Kenny. For who doesn't know what can is, it's a model to detect edges of an image. So applies a conditioning on the model. And this condition is to replicate a specific pictures, like for example, this bird here, using a reference image. So said that, if we scroll down, we will see that there is some code here. So we can just copy and paste this code into our column notebook and then change it a little bit. So I'm going to copy this. In the meantime, this is connected. I'm going to paste and then I'm going to create another code. Go back here, copy and paste. Cool. So this was the easiest part, right? So let's have a look at what we have here. We have some libraries we need to install in order to run Kenny. We are importing, again, some tools like NumPy and Torch for running Kenny and to generate our final output based on Kenny. Then here we have the positive prompt, here we have the negative prompt, which obviously we need to change. We need to load our image, so we'll use and we'll change this path here. We have control net conditioning scale. We are going to download Kenny. We are going to download our variational autoencoder. We are going to download stable diffusion Excel base, which we'll use as a base model. And then we are going here, we are going to adjust some setting for a running Kenny model. And then we are going to generate the final image using all of the settings we've chosen. Okay, now we could run this directly, right? But the only issue is that we are connected to an external computer. What will be useful is to connect our notebook to our Google Drive. So in order to do that, we just need to add a simple code at the beginning of these two pieces of codes. We are going to do that in here. And this is the code. So actually, for making everything clear, we can add some text. So mount to Google Drive. We can add some text here saying install requirements and then here generate image. So we have these three sections we need to run. So let's start. The first one we need to run this mount to Google Drive. It's going to ask permission. So we need to approve, choose your account, allow, and it's going to connect to your Google Drive. Okay, 20 seconds, so pretty quick. We can then install the requirements. 13 seconds, cool. 
And now we are going to modify a little bit this code to run our image generation process using canny as conditioning. Okay, let's first choose the picture we want to use. So this is gonna be my input image. Okay, now I'm going into my drive and I'm going to create a folder inside my drive. I created it already, it's called ControlNet, maybe I can rename it. Let's call it ControlNet Canny. Then I have one output folder and then I can add an input folder. Now in my input folder, I'm going to upload the picture I just downloaded. Okay. And my output folder is empty for now because it's going to be filled with the image we are going to generate now. If we go back to our file, so if you click on this little folder on the left side, you will see here that you have G Drive, which is your Google Drive. If you open it, you have My Drive. And here you can see all of my folders, those that I have on my Google Drive. And here there is Control Net Canny, which I just created. So if I open it, I have my input and my output. So here you have basically your Google Drive. So for getting all of the path for your input and output, we can simply use this sidebar. So here, load image, we can we have our input image, so we can right click on this, copy path, and then we are going to paste it in here, like that. Make sure that the name of the image plus the extension is here. Then we want to change the prompt. Maybe we want a photo of a black dog, something very simple. Then we have the negative prompt, which is low quality, bad quality sketches, that's completely fine. Then you have the control net conditioning scale. This is a value going between zero and one. The recommended for good generalization is 0.5, as you can see, but it really depends on what you want. So we can try different options. Maybe let's leave it as 0.5 for now and let's increase it afterwards. Then we don't want to change the control net variable. We don't want to change the variation of the encoder. Let's keep it like that. We don't want to change this variable either, which is the stable diffusion Excel base, unless you want to change the, the model. So if you want to change the model as a base model, you can change this as well. But in my case, in our case, for now, we want to use the Excel base 1.0. And then let's come to here. So these are different built-in function. And if you're curious about, you know, knowing what they are, you can print the variable. So you can type print image in here. If you don't know what these functions are, like for example, canny, you can just Google it. So if you go into Google and you type canny built-in function, is going to tell you. So canny function in OpenCV is used to detect the edges in an image where image is the input image to which canny filter will be applied. And then you have T lower, which is the lower threshold value. And then you have the high value, which is the higher threshold. By default, you have 100 and 200. This really depends on the image you are using. I haven't tested my image, but we are going to have a look at different values. I've seen a lot of people using 85 and 255, where 255 is three times 85. A lot of people blurry the image before inputting into Canny. A lot of people transform the image from RGB, so red, green, blue, into grayscale before applying Canny and other people calculate the median pixels for the input image and then uh, they multiply the median by 0 0.6 for the lower value and the median by 1.3 for the higher value. From a practical point of view, the low threshold is important to identify not relevant pixels, while the high threshold is important for identifying strong pixels. So when can is applied, it will consider pixels higher than the high threshold and it will avoid pixels lower than the low threshold. So I'm going to use for now in, in, into this notebook the default one, which is 100 and 200 for the low and high threshold respectively. But when we are going to see Kenny in ConfUI, I'm going to show you different values in order to see the mask uh, that is going to be applied to generate the output image. 
Okay, so all good here. And then the last thing we want to do is to change the path to where we want to save our final image, which in my case is this output folder. So again, we right click on the output folder, copy path, and we are going to paste it in here like that. So now in theory, we are ready for running this code. Let's try. Also, after you run this once, the generation process will be way quicker afterwards, obviously with the same notebook. And this is the image we generated. So as you can see, we have something very similar to our input image, which is great. Obviously, if you change some of the setting we've just seen, like for example, the control net conditioning scale or the low and high threshold for Kenny, you're going to get different results. And now let's have a look at ConfuEye. So this is the notebook, right? What we have to change, first of all, we just need to add the control net link for downloading them if you haven't done it yet. So I've just, you know, added these three pieces of codes in here. Where did I get this from? So obviously I wrote this manually. Then I took this link here from here. This is Kenny, files and versions tab, you have the save tensor in here. So I just right click on this arrow and then copy link address, go back into ConfUI and then you paste the link in here. And then you had this path for um, saving control net inside this folder into your Google Drive. And you do the same for depth and open pause. So this is the only change I applied to this notebook. So let's start by running this first section, connect to Google Drive again, allow. So this first section is simply mounting to your Google Drive, so connecting to your Google Drive and installing all of the different requirements or so libraries for running the, the code. Okay, then you can run this for downloading the, the models. Okay, and then I'm going to run the last section for activating the tunnel. Click on the URL copy the password, paste it in here, submit, and we should get the default interface for ConfUI. So now let's adjust this for control net. We change the checkpoint to SD Excel base. We change the positive prompt with uh, a photo of a black dog. Then we can maybe add a few more words for the negative prompt, nothing relevant. So all of this is fine for the Excel base, what we need to do is just add control net. Double click, you look for control net and you have control net apply, again, control net, control net loader. And here we need to choose the candy, which is this one, diffusion PyTorch model. Yeah. Then double click, if we type candy, we also have candy. Great. We need also the image loader load image. So here we can load our picture, which is this one. Let's move this a little bit around. So we can link this to here, image to image. This conditioning, the positive prompt, we can delete this node and we link it into here. We, sorry, this should be in Kenny in reality. So it should be like this, yeah. And then this should go into here in reality, like this. Then this conditioning we have linked into here. So this is loading the model. This is uh, inputting the conditioning, which is the image we want to use. In here, we are connecting the image into Kenny. Okay, then let's create a 1024 by 1024 image. We are going to use the maximum strength for control net, which is one. As I said before, these values go from zero to one. So we are going to use one now. We were using 0 0.5 in the other file, in the collab notebook. We uh, are going to use uh, 0 0.085 and 255 respectively for the low and the high threshold. We can have a look at the mask like this. So we'll see what mask is applied to generate our output. And then 
we have our final image. So it's connected to the key sampler. We can use a random seed. Number of steps, maybe we can use 30. Maybe, well, let's keep the sampler and everything seems fine. So let's press on Q prompt. And let's see what happened. So this is the preview image. Actually, instead of preview, I would like to do save. So let's save it uh, so we can, can remove this. Let's have a look at the mask. So this is the mask that we are applying. So as you can see, it's not taking into consideration these edges and it's taking too much into consideration instead those in the middle, right? And this is the output, right? So let's try with 600 and 200, for example, where 600 is three times 200. So in this case, it's even worse. So what we have to do, probably we need to decrease this value. So now I have decreased this uh, high threshold and I have decreased the low threshold as well. More or less the high threshold is always three times the low threshold. And here it's better because as you can see, you have more defined edges. So you can see the mask in here. Look at this. It's almost perfect. Maybe it's even too much. Like you see, I have all of these edges on the ears, which are not really relevant. So maybe we can increase this 0.30 to 0.60. Maybe we can, we can try. Slightly better, but still not the best. So I would recommend to try different values in here for finding what you really want. But just keep in mind that the final image depends a lot on these two values. So the low and the high threshold. So yeah, that's it for today. This is how you use Control Net Canny within ConfUI and with the Collab Notebook. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching and see you at the next video. Bye.